I click this button and then I say, yo, what up? How's it going? Hey, pretty good. How are you? I am well and swell. Um, Mirko mm. 2. How neat. Uh, hit me with the pitch. Mm. Yeah, so the gist of it is she's basically or, you know, very similar to Mikasa, but she has death, so she can play um, she can play Risky Encounter, which is always a plus. <clears throat> um, and it's just with the Attack on Titan card, since she has three attuned symbols, you just get a lot of options. And Risky Encounter is just a crazy card, and it has Fury, so you can clear it out of your card pool with Mirko and potentially play it multiple times. Um, and you just have stuff like Fiery Stare that's just a lot of card draw. Um... This is my chance just to help clear your card pool. And so it just has a lot of cards that kind of fix the uh, consistency problems that she's having with seeing enough cards and clearing her card pool effectively, even if she's getting blocked. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, I mean, it's nothing special. It's just a aggressive six-hander that's trying to kill you before, you know, before uh, you can kill her. But she's got stuff like Smiling Death and Split Body Control to have a, enough disruption to try and get through. And... Um, yeah, I mean that's that's it. It's nothing nothing too complicated. Hit me with the you got seven cards over here as a package of strategic maneuver. Mm -hmm. Um how do you feel about these four individual uh assets? So I haven't had enough time to play with them. That was just something I, I had two grenade bracers and I didn't play strategic maneuvers. Um, but just realizing what you can build in and the fact that you get to go choose what fits your situation better. Um just seemed really nice and also the fact that because it's a form you get to play that to clear your breaker you get to play that to clear airy smiles or learning the standards and so yeah. as this card pool clearing string deck it's just a card that even if you don't have an asset it just says form make a check you played a card um and so that was something i was just trying out just to kind of work around that disruption um reloadable swords has been really nice because the one damage adds up and even if you don't have momentum, just the fact that you can put three speed on something and a character that needs to hit you and only sometimes gets one, like that plus three speed has been quite a bit. And just the fact that you can destroy or sacrifice reloadable swords to get the three speed and then form strategic maneuver, build a back end and then blow it up for three speed on the next one is just kind of crazy. Um, so that one has been the one that's felt the best. And I haven't been able to actually play uh, the gas propellant or the sports festival stadium. Okay. But it's just the same idea of just trying to get more speed and more damage um, and more like with Sports Festival Stadium, being able to clear out breaker blocks, just a little bit more kind of dis like dis or yeah, more disruption hate. Yeah, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I, I super get it. I think that like I really like gas propellant and I have fallen off on reloadable swords. Um, okay. I get that this plus damage is like super good, but I almost would rather this just be like a second copy of Grenade Bracers to guarantee right. that you see it because this is this is this is the way that you get to kill people, um, and you'll pro you'll probably get yeah. the plus one damage off of off of its ability, um, and having like the difference between having Grenade Bracers out and Grenaders and Reloadable is like so neg negligible that we want this one so bad because of the spear mm -hmm. bomb that it does at the end, right? Yeah, and the fact that the enhanced commit doesn't check. Foundations destroyed while it's in the stage. It just checks foundations destroyed this turn. Correct. And so you can not have it, and then just magically put it in your stage and just say, "Hey, I have plus eight damage." Yes. Correct. Um, that is how that is how I feel about it. There's the one mm -hmm. other asset that I am. This we are under death, Fun death. right? Uh, yeah. So that does mess with Torino's agency trainees. So there mm -hmm. goes that idea. I forgot this card had the death symbol. <laughs> I, I just I see this like an air card. Yeah. Um. I, I think the only thing that puts reloadable swords a little bit ahead of Grenader Bracer or the second copy of Grenader Bracer for me is just the fact that risky encounter is hitting for like ten plus damage because I'm already destroying my own foundation. So even mm -hmm. if I only play it once, it's already getting to those really high value, like really high damage values. Sure. And so that three speed has put in a lot of work. Um. So. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it just felt better, but also oh, there are just sure. been situations. This guy gets sacrificed for three speed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and whereas in something like Mikasa, you know, or or um, Irwin, like you you already putting speed on your thing, so that's negligible. Whereas in Mirko, the only speed is the character, and this is my yeah. chance. And other than that, the only way to really kind of break through walls is using stun grenade to try and stun three or stun four. Well, we do have access to and, and and this is a this is a foundation that i th I, I am surprised we're not seeing more of of skilled swordsmen uh, swordsmanship mm -hmm. um 
flip your attack with printed difficulty four or less gets uh plus two speed um this card is just let's fight bad guys right right for any any printed for difficulty or less attack so mm -hmm. not this one not this one not this one but yes 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 like yeah giving your vial seizing plus two speed and then like saying that your vial gets to actually hit is like huge right like imagine mm -hmm. imagine skilled swordsmanship combined with i will i will flip swordsmanship i will commit that flip card for solo pros my move yeah. gets plus four speed i just i just get to hit you like i just hit you mm -hmm. um which i think is like pretty good and i think it's probably better than what like i'm with you is doing just because like like your character i don't think needs damage your character needs to land moves mm -hmm. i get that the minus two damage is pretty good i get that but yeah. I think that I think that your character is dead in the water if you don't ha get this response commit, right? Yeah. Well, and I mean that's where the the four copies of this is my chance and the th the I guess I only have one copy right now, but the battlefield age. So I have five cards that help me clear. I guess it's only and the, and then the four throws that are guaranteed to hit unless they've got something. Sure. But that's also a six diff. And I mean I've played this card as a as a first form. Just played on a six. You know, even if I check a three, I just commit my character, blow up one. It doesn't feel terrible, and then I. Yeah. Yeah, it's momentum hate. It's a seven damage throw. I can see what they're gonna throw at me and and kind of work from there. Um, and like with I'm with you having the plus two damage, the reloadable swords with the plus one and or the plus three. Um, just I don't know that damage just kind of adds up pretty quickly against seven handers. And the fact that on a stun grenade, if you mill, I'm with you, it can hit the discard pile, you know, from your deck, and then you can get the two damage, which makes it a little bit more threatening. But mm. I mean, that's more of like a one off thing. That's like the only synergy that that card has. That are like. Fi a fiery stare getting a couple points of damage i mean it that two damage has helped but i, I get your point of i i wonder how much more the plus two speed would have helped instead of just plus two damage sometimes yeah because like like imagine fiery stare being a seven for seven right yeah like that it, it, sounds whenever i play that with this is my chance that's amazing Ooh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with now... this is my chance it's a seven seven well you can't do the two speed because it's not a four oh sure 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 but, but with yeah. this is my chance it's a seven seven that if it hits it clears if it's blocked it clears and it's it's a nasty opener, and I cycle too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think this card is like being super slept on right now. Um, I think it's like, okay. I think it's I think it's crazy. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. And if 100%. I don't have enough four diffs, if I don't have enough four diffs, I mean, I can always play it at a at a. I don't have to play it at a four of. Correct. Um, but I guess it also it doesn't have to be the first attack or the only attack in your card pool like this is my chance and it's not a first form. Yeah. So if I've got multiple of them, I can just put two of them on a four diff and just yeah. say it hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like, okay. man, this I, I, I again, I, I think this is this is one of the best cards in the in the set because yeah. so many cards are just printed for, for mm -hmm. us. Um, how do you feel about fiery stare? Hit me, hit me with this. Uh, that card has felt just absolutely amazing. Um. I, the fact that it's draw two then discard two instead of discard then draw it um, feels really good to be able to draw my two cards and figure out what I'm doing even if it's a turn where I've got like two attacks and four foundations or three and three or you know something like that just the fact that I get a you know draw two and if I draw two foundations I can just pitch two attacks it's still a five mid seven and then I get to keep you know I, I get to see more foundations or even if I'm discarding two foundations I get to kind of sculpt my foundations a little bit better and maybe pitch some of the zero diffs or the one diffs that don't quite fit or the three diffs I'm not going to be able to play. Um, and with, uh, I'm with you, just the fact that you can accidentally get an extra plus two sometimes, you know, it's a it's a seven mid nine as your first attack that cycles to. And pitching two attacks is either he's not playing any more attacks or he has seven orange cards in his hand and he had to throw away two of them. Yeah. And so I feel like you're not really giving, a whole, giving away a whole lot of information. And so just the consistency of draw two cards has felt great on a on a symbol that i don't have access to a lot of easy card draw on just because stun grenade has a chance you know misses relatively often file seizing if they commit to you don't draw and so just the fact that i get to draw two on a card where you know in, in a deck where i'm trying to you know trying to threaten to kill you on turn two um feels fantastic I noticed that our high and then because little... Mir oh go ahead go ahead go ahead and, and i was just gonna say and like playing more you know a higher difficulty curve on the uh attacks hasn't felt like a big issue just because if i check a three you know when i'm playing it on a five i commit a foundation commit mirko destroy a foundation ready mirko and i'm you know it, it's like i just destroyed one to get through it and if i'm destroying the uh 
smiling death, I'm gonna flip your stuff. Like I probably wanted to blow that up anyway, and so I'm gonna yeah. flip something. And so the the five diff, yeah, just the consistency that it gives you just has felt really good. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple things to our sideboard that we get to talk about. Um, yeah, because I think my biggest issue with your deck is that it just doesn't have high blocks. Um, okay, so yeah, here's here's my thing about Fiery Stare, <laughs> is I want to make it a three of, and I want to hmm. put Lunar Ring up to a two of, because assets are crazy. Yeah, that's been one issue that I've been having of how do I how do I stop assets, and that five diff attack seems like it's the only way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I think, I think you, I think, and it, and it also, you ready? It also, if you are able to like string out, it is just another mm -hmm. copy of Bracers. It is right. just another risky encounter. Like it mm -hmm. is, it is a third version of that, that idea. Yeah, another yeah. card that says you sell it to block something, I kill you. Yes. Um, I want to take, and I, I think that this idea of the assets actions is very cool. But I think that we're going a little hard on it right now. I want to take the strategic mover down to a two of. Okay. And then I want and you to I want you to cut one asset for me. I think it's the I think it's the gas propellant. Just the one speed doesn't I, I don't know. The one speed doesn't seem like a whole lot, especially if we're adding four of that one diff that's plus two speed. And playing two solo pros ferocity, just being able to find the two speed. Speed hasn't been a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Um and it just doesn't offer anything outside of that, whereas Reloadable Swords is flexible. Granite, Grenadier Bracers is big, and Sports Festival Stadium throws away breaker blocks and face shields. Sure. This is acceptable. From here, we have to put in more high blocks because this isn't enough. Yeah. Um, I've given just, like, quick options. Selling all debts is okay. Weapon Clash as you build in a free foundation, and it also, mm -hmm. like, is a little bit of damage reduction. Or Immortal Shapeshifter says every time that you break one, you get to um, gain a health as well excuse me as well as it itself can give damage which is very reloadable swords yeah um uh it feels like that the other option is just play four solo pros ferocity because the number one thing that you want to have happen as a mirko deck is you need to land your moves your moves have yeah. to connect if they don't connect you you don't get to play the game right and so, so this is a one high block that we always want to see on our opening hand, and I always want to play solo pros. It's my first form of the game every single game. This is the first thing that wants to touch the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the big issues I've been having, though, is I've got a lot of... I'm at six three diffs right now, and um, I forgot how many two diffs I have exactly, but I, I think I've only got 15 or 16 oh, spam. It's so not a lot. few spam. Yeah, and so it's just the... Because the two diffs and the three diffs on, uh, for this particular deck are very powerful i've gotten really greedy with just what the difficulty curve looks like and sure part of it is just because if you have an enormous axe that's you know you actually built two foundations and that feels fantastic yeah um because you can commit it blow it up you know to ready your character you get a new one you get to do it again um and so like if i build five they're five good ones but there are times where i build three and it's like well i guess i'm not doing anything this turn especially if i'm playing you know, was playing seven non-foundation, non-attack cards, and now Correct. if it's down to five, that's a little better. But it, it's just been, it's felt inconsistent, but the spam hasn't felt great, and the two diffs and the three diffs have felt so good. It, I felt, I've that's one of the big issues I've been having, is what do, what do I cut? Because, um, like, learning to harden, you know, which just says draw a card, and if I need to commit it, it's minus two speed or plus two damage, which is great. I cut that because Fiery Stare was doing the card draw that I needed to, and Stun Grenade and Violet, like... I found enough card draw on my attacks where getting rid of the card draw and learning to harden felt fine. Sure. But that's also because I'm, I've been really enjoying the, or I guess I have seven copies of flip of foundation, but the split body control and the smiling death have been really good. But I think that might just be because I haven't, people haven't been putting in saving Bakugo and chivalrous competitor, which they, which they, they will be yeah. in, the, in this format. So, so my idea is like maybe, in order to increase this number of spam because of how bad you want to build, it might be just like like let's just play two, three copies of class membership as our as the high blocks yeah. that we're missing here, um, just to make this curve a, curve a, a little better. I'll even drop it back down to two so that your number stays at sixty, right? Mm -hmm. um, like this this is okay. This number feels way 
better to me. If you wanted to get even crazier, you could take the split body and drop it down to a two, two of. I think that's an acceptable number. Um, mm -hmm. and cause, because you already do have the Smiling Death, right? So six copies of this card is like six is not seven, right? Um, <clears throat> and you're not missing the low block, right? But like we, we're trading off a two diff for a zero diff, so it should just make your turn one into turn two better to just feel mm -hmm. better um which is like like you have to build foundations in order for this card to matter right, right. And i'm not saying you have to do it on turn two but like as soon as you find the risky if you have six foundations is this card worth blowing up 50 percent of my stage for the answer is no right mm -hmm. and if i'm playing attack cards how often be i'm playing attack cards and i don't have a ton of draw right the only amount of quote unquote draw that I have is Botons, which is not actual draw. I've got Learning right. Arden, which is a plus one. Well this is after a... you destroy a foundation, so Correct. you still lose a card. Like Yeah, 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 yeah. But like this is a plus one, but doesn't give you a foundation. Like Right. Like you you are a real ass six hander for the entire game. You don't have ways yeah. to cheat. Because we're not playing things like settling. Right? Yeah. You've got ways to fix your hand, but you've got no. You you're stuck at six. You're stuck at the six God gave you, and that yeah. is. And the defense is just thirty health, which isn't a lot anymore. <laughs> Correct. It certainly is not. Like you've got you've got some stuff. Like there, there are some tricks. I'm with you. Always cool. Minus speed. Um, yeah. Like these these are these are options, and it might be that like your sideboard turns into, I'm going second. I need to put in defense. Kind of an idea, right? Yeah, um, and and that's where stuff like Weapon Clash, I, I pulled that out um, just because Always Cool can build you that second foundation in a very similar fashion, but Weapon Clash always felt good going second. Just being able to, I play it, my rival takes their first turn, they play an attack, Weapon Clash turns into two on my turn. Mm -hmm. um, but it just didn't do anything um, just because I, I didn't get the minus two damage very often since I was usually flipping it um, just to, to get the extra foundation. But like that did feel good as a going second card. Um, so like you ready? Always like if this mm -hmm. card doesn't do anything, that means this card doesn't do anything. They're the same card. I guess the big difference is that Enormous X has a one mid block. Well, I guess if I'm not playing great defense. That probably doesn't matter much. But just the fact that Enormous X, while it's uh, what am I trying? To, like I can commit it and that, or when it builds in, it builds in ready. Whereas Enormous X or Weapon Clash is building in committed. And so that one might make a difference. Sure. Um, and then also, if I have, like, if I build Enormous Axe and two foundations and I play a four and I check a three, I can, or, you know, play a five and check a three or whatever, Enormous Axe still works while it's committed. So it is, I mean, I, I get what you're saying of they're both, they both say plus one foundation, but the Enormous Axe is a little bit safer, but it is a three diff. And so, so I guess my point is, right, is when you look at this, they both say, you're, you're looking at the, um, you're looking at the tr the leaves of the tree. I want you to look at the full tree of this card is two foundations and this card is two foundations. When you get that foundation is dependent game to game or, and, and mm -hmm. situation to situation. Not necessarily like, yes, the Enormous X lets you build it in back readied. But if you just like pop this on a turn that you don't need it, then it it is already ready and stays yeah. stays as a, as a, you went plus one as opposed to going even for the rest of the game. Right. Right. That's true, because enormous axe. Yeah, I am going even. Like, I get the value of getting the ready foundation, but it's this is this is only, good. It only matters. It's only plus if I'm killing you. This is plus one on every turn as soon as you you've done it, right? That's true. And, and so like, and it's a high block. And and it's a high <laughs> block. And late in the game, when I've got three or four face downs, sometimes this is minus eight damage, right? On turn four, when yeah. I draw my my third weapon clash, and I've already used two of them, I go, oh, well, I'll just play my weapon clash, and this might keep me alive so that I can. I can adapt, right? A weapons mm -hmm. clash, then block with class membership, and then I actually took, quote unquote, took nothing from this, right? Right. Um, that is why. That is why I am on. I, like, so I. The deck that I've been playing the most is Smiling, which is, mm -hmm. is obviously not the same character, not the same ideas, right? But I play four copies of Always Cool and four copies of Weapons Clash. Because on the first two turns of the game, they build me a bunch of foundations, right? In order to stabilize and, like, play the game. Which your character wants a bunch of foundations, mm -hmm. right? No, you're not turning them all sideways for one attack. But you are trying to blow up your stage in order to make your character work. And then after turn three, this card says that I don't die and this card says that I don't die. 
Okay. And then sometimes, if I disrespect them on turn uh, on turn four, this card says that I get to just build. And this card says I get to build, right? And so, like, depending on depending <laughs> yeah. on what it is, like this this card says that on a turn that I'm not afraid of you, I wasn't a six hander that turn. I was a seven hander, and I got a bonus build. Yeah. Right. I wasn't a six hander. I was a seven hander. And so, like, this is the way that we could p possibly cheat our hand size if you like squint your eyes and look at it in the right light right like it's yeah. like it is not drawing a, bon a bonus card it's not but it is getting an extra resource somewhere along the way inside of your game which mm -hmm. can be valuable whenever you are fighting the Mikasas whenever you're fighting the Reiners when you're fighting the Ymirs when you're fighting when you're fight hell uh, Having plus one more foundation build on a turn later could be the difference between blocking and not blocking a Rodan, who has not gone anywhere. That character is still crazy, right? Right. Like, like if this is going to compete with, with the big boys, then having these little extra um, points of advantage might be, might be necessary. Mm -hmm. But all of this is to say, I don't know what to cut for this card. It's probably yeah. something – it's probably these four cards, but we want to try this idea, and so we should leave it in the deck. We just should, right? Like, yeah. this is this is the thing that we are experimenting with is is this idea, and so we should keep these four cards in to see if they are, if they are worth it. Mm-hmm. I mean, would it be worthwhile just to get rid of, because six, three, or I think about, what is it, five, three diffs is a lot. Would it make sense to cut two enormous acts for two weapon clash just to make it, to lower, like to, to reduce the difficulty a little bit? Or does going from three to two not make a huge difference in the big picture? Is it more just the number of ones and zeros? So I don't think the difficulty matters. I think the, what matters is the ability on it, right? Which this thing does yeah. give damage, right? It's an, this is an offensive card. Whereas this yeah. has a little bit of defense and also is also a flow card, right? Yeah. This is flow offense. This is flow defense. One of them is a little cheaper, but the goal is to play both of them onto the board. We don't want to block with them mm -hmm. at all, right? The only right. reason that we we count these as blocks is for for good ratios when you have to panic draw a card, which your deck right. doesn't do. It's just learning to hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Right, and so it's like, are you uh, the reason to make sure that your block zones are? are relevant is is because we don't want to get if i'm playing 12 high blocks i'm just going to get juked uh juked by a falling skies deck if i'm playing yeah. 12 low blocks i'm just going to get juked by a low attack chaos deck right yeah the only reason i have those those even block modifiers is for whenever you roll the dice on what matchup i'm gonna see at a tournament i go ah shit i've i've accidentally fought two falling skies decks those were my two losses because I, I have 27 mids, 22 lows, and 12 highs. I yeah. just can't win the matchup, right? I just have to try and kill them, and they're playing a Falling Skies deck, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, like, like, the stats that are on this card don't necessarily matter, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So from here, it's your choice. I think Enormous Axe and Weapons Clash are very similar ideas. The other thing that you can do is whenever you are testing this card, um, bring in, play Enormous Axe, and then bring in Weapons Clash and have it be Schrodinger's card and figure okay. out when when does it feel better to play the Enormous Axe or the Weapons Clash, which one just feels like, like oh man, I really liked using the flip rebuild on Weapons Clash way more than it was to destroy on Enormous Axe. It got me, it, mm -hmm. it made me feel better earlier. Well, you, that, that's the choice. Man, I never flipped Weapon Clash one time, but any time that I would destroy a foundation, Enormous Axe was just the, just the answer. Okay, yeah. well, we figured it out, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, no, that makes sense so this to is, me. This is your choice. You get to decide. Keep the Enormous Axe or Weapons Clash in the main board. That I, I, I think I'll back stick to. with the Enormous Axe just because blowing. if I'm blowing up on defense, I think I'm already losing um, because if I'm destroy, Like, that's how I kill you is I need to destroy foundations for my character. So if mm -hmm. I'm destroying foundations to, like, Weapon Clash feels like in this particular deck, you're playing to not lose, not necessarily playing to win. Sure. Um, so I, I, think I'll, I think I'll do what you were saying of just 
imagine if it was you know both what would be better in this situation kind of take note of which one felt better more more often um and i'll uh -huh. stick with an I, I think i'll just stick with enormous axe because it's a little bit easier to use in terms of like doing the math with how many foundations i've got and how many i can commit and then also if i need to commit something like if i'm checking too well then i can commit enormous axe and give my throw plus two plus three damage yeah you know and make push it from seven to, to 12 and that's how i can hate on vertical maneuvering uh, equipment decks where you know they've got three momentum and it's like okay here's a throw spend two of them yeah yeah that makes sense yeah i um i think that I think that this, at this point, this this list is totally fine. the The main thing that after after we get, if if we don't like this experiment, right? If we don't mm -hmm. like what's going on here with the with the strategic maneuvers idea, I think that the goal should just be how much advantage can I have both in my hand and then on the board, and just like cheat the system of I'm not a six hander. I've got twelve resources, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but with that final thoughts <clears throat> um no i don't i don't have anything else i mean it seems pretty straightforward you're just playing a character yeah you just got to figure out how to kill them before they kill you i mean it's yeah. doesn't seem it's not too complicated <laughs> correct <laughs> welcome to miracle gameplay <laughs> yeah all right you stay on the line long enough for me to shoot to the list and you have a good night okay Alrighty. thank you you too welcome